Financial Times story made my heart palpitate. Just in the month of August, the Globe added $3.1 trillion in negative securities, bringing the grand total now to a little bit more than $17 trillion. What do you think about that? I think it caused a rush and a capitulation into bonds here in the States. We've seen foreign investors. Um, you see that through some of the fund flows. The ETFs have attracted money. So it's really almost this last gasp, you know, capitulation that we are the only place to get yield and people flocked here in August. And I think with a lack of liquidity, it's a bit overdone right now. Now, and you know what, reading that and reading all the stories about how, as you just pointed out, foreign investors coming in for stocks, coming in for treasury securities, you know, we have to weave that inverted curve into this. Now, I'm not saying we can't have a recession, not by a long shot, but you need to monitor the data. The yield curve really does have some issues. Your thought? Right. I think there is a reflection that people are concerned about future growth. But I think there's been so much demand coming in for these uh, bond products, particularly long-dated products. Everyone's really decided they want to own long-dated bonds as a hedge against equities going down or as the only way to get yield. It's put so much pressure in a pretty thinly traded market in August that I think some of the inversion is just technical factors. And as it normalizes in September, as corporates come back to the issuance side, I think we'll see a little bit of steepening. And honestly, I think Munition's talking about the 100-year bond and may switch a little bit of his issuance because the Treasury should be issuing long-dated debt, all of which would put some pressure on and re-steepen the curve, which I think would be healthy because all this talk about inverted yield curves is bad for the economy. Yeah, no, and you make a great point, and many people on this trading floor bring up the fact that, you know, all of these uh, T-bills that are being issued really is just exaggerating the issues of the yield curve. Let's move to another topic real quick. Uh, trillion triple Bs, uh, excuse me, three trillion triple Bs, one trillion triple B minus. This is the lowest rung of investment grade. Is any of this paper going to be big problems, problematic in a downturn in your opinion, Peter? I don't think it's going to be problematic at all. We talked to a lot of the corporations. I think they're well aware of where they stand with the rating agencies, what they need to do. There's a lot of levers they can pull to maintain those ratings. And the big thing everyone's got to remember, in the past few years with yield so tight, no one needs to be single A, so people have gravitated towards triple B, but they do not want to go to high yield. So I think that's really important. And the other big trend that doesn't get talked about enough is I think insurance companies are much more sophisticated. They don't want to be forced to sell risk. So I think they've already pared back on the bonds that they don't like if it got downgraded. So I don't think you're going to see wholesale selling pressure. I think the problem to look for in credit is not going to be the triple Bs. It's going to be a little bit somewhere down the curve. Some of the high yield names are having a little bit of trouble. Maybe emerging markets is due to crack. And maybe we're supposed to be looking elsewhere. What is, quote unquote, a safe asset that's overdone that could pull back? Because that tends to be where the problems occur, not where everyone's looking. 